John Wesley said this. He said, it seems that without God, man cannot do anything on earth. But without man, God will not do anything on earth. Beautiful statement. Without God, man cannot. And without man, God will not. There's some things God wants to be done on earth for his kingdom. He wants his kingdom to come on earth. But he cannot do it without man, and man cannot do it without God. In other words, prayer is really a partnership between the divine and mankind. God needs you, and you need God. The point is, what happens on earth doesn't really depend on God. I remember when I began to learn to fast. I learned to fast from my mother and father. But my mother especially, she had some books around the house written by men like Shambach and A.A. A. Allen. And all Roberts. And I kept thinking, these men got so much spiritual power. I want that power. And they used to say, you got to pay a price. And I began to study it. And let's talk about the effects of fasting. I like this one. What happens when you fast? First of all, fasting changes you. Now, why did I say that? Because number two is a contradiction. Fasting does not change God. God never changes. Ain't nothing wrong with God. God ain't clogged up. <laughs> the clogging got to be on the other side. Fasting doesn't change God. It doesn't move God. It moves God. And changes you the best way to describe God and your life in a fast is before you fast or live a fasted life it's almost like a big tank with 50,000 gallons of water in it and a little pipe is hooked up to it small little two-inch pipe to this big tank the amount of water that's available is 50,000 gallons but the amount that can flow through your little pipe is one-tenth of a gallon the amount that's available doesn't change but the amount that flows out through the pipe depends on the size of the pipe God is always 50,000 gallons ready to do some stuff, but he can't find pipes to hook up big enough. And most of the pipes hook up to them, they all clog up with sin, food, grits. <laughs> and peace. Grits and peace, Jesus help me. With salt beef in it. Ooh, I feel that noise right there. <laughs> this is your last go round. You better enjoy it now. <laughs> God is ready to work anytime, but he keeps running into these pipes that are so small, clogged up. And they're making plenty of noise, you know. <laughs> they shouting, claiming, confessing. God said, But you clogged up. The Lord can do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I got nothing but this little, this little hole you got. You ain't got a fasted life. Fasting is the most important aspect of prayer. It doesn't move God. Number three, fasting increases your spiritual capacity. It's like going back to the tank, removing the two-inch pipe, and putting a 15-inch pipe to it. Now, 
more water can flow. God says, look, I need to find some people who will increase their capacity to handle my flow. Let me tell you something. Okay, let's I'm gonna read the scripture, quote the scripture again. We love the scripture, okay? When there's crime in a country, economic chaos, social decay, immorality in a country, what do we do? Let's call a prayer meeting, we say. So all the bishops get together, and we get in the park, and all the saints come along with their bellies full of grits. <laughs> The bishop belly bigger than anybody else belly. But watch this now. And they come to pray for what? A nation. Watch this now. A nation. Now you know how big a nation is? Do you know how complicated a nation is? Do you know how complicated crime is and broken homes and, and abuse? These are big problems. And you come to God, a small little pipe. I want you to heal the nation, please. God said, the stuff I need to heal your nature, that pipe ain't going to work. <laughs> so what's God? If my people who claim to be called by my name, if they want, okay, write the word humble down. The word humble, in my book I talk about this. The word humble, to humble means to fast. The translation in the English was not a good translation. It means to humble, it means to fast and pray. You want God to heal a big problem? He need a big pipe. The demon that was in that boy must have been a legion. Because they prayed for that little boy, remember? They, they prayed all afternoon and the demon wouldn't come out. And when Christ came down from the mountain, it came out in seconds. Question, what was he doing in the mountain? Let me read the verse before. It says, he went aside alone to pray and to fast. When he came down, no food. Fellas down there full of fish. Come out, come out. Demon said, your, your pipe too small. I ain't coming out of this brother. And the Bible says, Jesus just said, out. Demon left. The disciples prayed the same prayer Jesus prayed different results and they were ashamed the Bible says because all the people saw that and the next morning they were at a meal and they were all quiet I don't blame them they were sitting in the room everybody eating like they spiritual he's all thinking he just embarrassed us before all them people and one of them built the courage. And Peter said, Lord, why couldn't we cast that demon out yesterday? Christ says, well, this kind doesn't come out just by prayer. This needs a big capacity. If you were trying to figure out something right now in your life, for the last six months, maybe a year, maybe two years, you've been trying to work on something and it seems as if it just wouldn't break. I'm giving you the biggest secret now. If you know you're supposed to have it, if you know it's God's will and the promise in the word, if you know this is God's legal right for you, if you know you're supposed to have it, then you're supposed to break that thing. And you break it by fasting. This is going to be the best three weeks you ever spent in your life. Things that were held up for three years are going to come out in three weeks. When God has a capacity big enough, he, when he begins to flow, every demon that 